lately, we've seen Google injecting Gemini into various parts of the Android operating system. About a year ago, we noticed Gemini had begun to show up within the Google Messages app, and recently, Google decided to give Gemini access to a plethora of apps on your device, even if you had previously blocked this type of access. So today, I wanted to create a dedicated video that shows you a number of ways you can actually remove Gemini from your Android device. None of the methods that I show you here today will require root access, but some of them will need a bit of setting up before they can be used. So just follow along and I can walk you through the entire process here today. For the first two methods that I'm going to show you, I'll assume that you can see the Google Gemini application somewhere on your home screen or in your application drawer. So the first methods that I want to cover start by finding that icon, and then you're going to perform a long press gesture on the icon itself. From here, look for the little eye icon so that you can tap it and dive into the app info page for Google Gemini. Then you're gonna to wanna to look in this top row of apps. Some of you will see a disable button here while others will have an uninstall button. Either of these are good options to choose if you're wanting to remove Gemini from your device. You are correct, disabling the app isn't going to uninstall it, but if you can't reuse that storage because it is a pre-installed app that's on a different partition, then you aren't going to be losing anything by just disabling it. And that's how it's done if you're only seeing that disable button here. But either option is good to go with. So if you see disable, tap it and confirm. If you see uninstall, tap it and then confirm. You'll see the application icon disappear and it will no longer be present on your home screen or in your application drawer. For anyone who saw a grayed out uninstall or a grayed out disable button in the app info page that I just showed you, you can take this a step further and actually remove Gemini from the default user account on your Android smartphone or tablet. This is similar to disabling the app, but it's actually going a step further by uninstalling it from your user account. And that means the app itself will not be accessible and its service cannot be launched and it cannot run in the background. The easiest way that I've found to do this is by using the Shizuku Kanta combination. If you're not familiar with what Shizuku or Kanta is, then that's understandable. The process of getting Shizuku up and running is not something that everyone is familiar with. So in an attempt to prevent this video from being longer than it needs to be, I'll include a link down in the video description below to a dedicated guide that I've already done on the subject. That video will walk you through installing the app using wireless debugging and getting the service up and running. Then you can install Kanta from its GitHub page or even just from the Google Play Store and then grant Kanta access to Shizuku when you want to use it. But again, don't worry if you aren't sure about how this is done because I'll have these guides linked in the pinned comment here as well so that they are easy for everyone to find. Once you have that Shizuku service up and running, we minimize that and open up Kanta. And up here at the top, we can search for the word 
Bard, B-A-R-D. That's actually the code name for what Gemini used to be called. So once you see Gemini here, and you can see that with the package name com.google.android.apps.bard. And we can tap on that checkbox right there to select it. You can see it is selected. And that gives us access to this trash can icon down here. Once Gemini is selected, we tap on that trash can icon, confirm, and you'll see that application disappear from our installed apps tab. But you'll see that right there in our uninstalled apps tab. Right there, com.google.android.apps.bard. If you would like to do this manually, you're more than welcome to use the ADB shell PM uninstall command. I've got a number of videos on this channel that show you this manual method as well. So I'll have a couple of those linked down below too. You just want to make sure you use that full package name, com.google.android.apps.bard. When you use that PM uninstall command that I show you in those videos, that method will only require that you have USB debugging mode enabled on the device, and you will need to have ADB and Fastboot tools installed on your desktop or laptop PC. It seems pretty obvious that Google sees Gemini as its next big service especially with people using search engines less and less these days. So I'm going to expect to see the company go to extreme links to keep this app or service on your Android device. This means that you will want to be aware of upcoming over the air firmware updates that possibly re-enable Google Gemini in the background. Google could even tie some other aspects of the operating system to Gemini in Android 17 or a future update, which could cause some issues with us who want to keep it off of our phone. But I can tell you that this works just fine as of right now. You could see some apps updated with Gemini features in the future, just like they did with messages but at least we can keep the native app from running on our smartphone. And hopefully they continue to add disable options similar to how they did with messages. If you're tired of Google Gemini and the plethora of AI powered features being added to your phone, then be sure to click that like button down below this video to help spread the word. And please share this video with your friends and family members as well so that they can get this app off their phone too. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel either if you haven't done so already.